A friend of mine asked me for help with her USB drive, which seemingly was no longer recognized when plugged in. A quick test confirmed me some kind of malfunction. The question is, is the data on this hard drive a total loss or can I still save it? Retrocomputing is the use of older computer hardware and software in modern times. I'm the Vintage Collector and these are my stories. Agreed. What does this have to do with retro computing? Well, the iOmega MDHD1 TV UE was released in around 2009, so it's 13 years old and it clearly qualifies as vintage. And first and foremost, it's about helping a friend, so I'll look at it anyways. My Mac also failed to recognize that hard drive, and on closer audible inspection, I hear a clickering noise emitted from the hard drive. Technically, this indicates a motor failure, but it also could indicate an issue with the USB to SATA electronics or the power supply itself. But before I tamper around with it, I'm gonna disassemble the enclosure and remove the hard drive. It's a pretty simple construction and removing the drive is straightforward. The only thing that is resistive is the heat shield which is glued onto the hard drive. But eventually I had the hard drive removed so I can insert it into an external USB dock. On power up I notice how the spindle properly accelerates and the drive heads test is performed. This surely is a good sign that the drive itself may actually be alive and kicking still. I will now take the chance to inspect it using the G-parted live distro. Either the drive is definitely borked or what I believe works fine giving me the option to save everything away just before anything bad happens. I'm happy to say that at least at first glance the hard drive seems to be detected. I will now mount it to the slash def slash sda1 directory and try accessing the data. This as well seems to pose no problems. After all, I'm now going to copy all data over to another hard drive. Very well, let's see how this proceeds. The estimate calculates for some 3.5 hours for the transaction. So while the hard drive seemingly looks ok, so I can copy away the data, I wonder if I can find out what's really wrong with this enclosure. While the copying process is on the way, I'm having a deeper look now at the enclosure to find potential issues here. So I have this other 1TB drive that I'm about to mount into the enclosure. This is a known good hard drive and it should help me in nailing the root cause down. But again with this one, I hear the same clickering noise as soon as I apply power. As it stands, it's the electronics or the power supply, but for sure not the hard drive itself. A visual inspection of the electronics doesn't show anything unusual, neither do I see capacitor leakage or blown capacitors. This does not necessarily mean it's ok, but it's indicative to check out the power supply first. Luckily, I have a spare multifunction power supply at hand. I just need to figure which one is the proper plug and mount it into the correct position. This enclosure needs a center positive power plug. And when applying power, we finally get to hear how the spindle revs up and the drive head seek is performed. At this point, the drive was also successfully recognized on the Mac again. Also, I could initialize and format the hard drive exactly as it should be. So after all, it was just a failed power supply that caused imminent fears of data loss. Replacing the power supply solved the issue and I actually could have tried this in the first place. But when I heard those clickering noises from the hard drive as well, I opted to do the data recovery route first. Luckily. The fix with the new power supply was easy. I put the old power supply in a box, so I might be looking into actually fixing it some other day. This story is also a perfect example why a simple USB drive is by no means a reliable data backup, especially if you keep your stuff just on this single hard drive. At least, 
Keep your data replicated onto two drives, or, as I'd rather recommend, get an ARS with two or four drive bays with RAID 1 or RAID 5, store your day-to-day -day data there, and have the NAS replicate the most precious of your data onto one or two USB disks. You can also use a cloud service and keep your data stored and revisioned there. In the end, everything is better than having no backup or a single USB disk, which I consider the same as having no backup at all. I hope you liked my video about saving this USB hard drive. If you did, then please give me a thumbs up. See you next time. You're about to see some potential upcoming topics for future videos right now. Please let me know in the comments which topics you are particularly interested in. Of course, you can also drop me in some other topics you'd like me to chase down.